Hello again. I have sucked a couple times since the end of last episode. Look at this, 67% on pretty much everything except for the golds. So, let's continue where we left off. We just need to leave the lab, I think, and we might get some dialogue. And, uh, yeah, I have a few more thoughts. But I've noticed some things from uh, watching a bit of other people's playthroughs. Oh, I'm still kind of fuzzy in here for some reason. Interesting. Uh, not sure the screen is supposed to look like this right now. Well, that might be a bug. Okay. <laughs> ah, well, it clears up in the air. You know, dealing with this hyper-advanced technology is quite challenging enough without the place also being bloody haunted. When I said it was outputting enough energy for two new Jerusalems, I wasn't kidding. It really was. And no emissions of any kind. I'd have to run more tests, but it seems like a perfect power source. And then imagine what the megastructure can do. And what we could do with that kind of energy. I wonder if anyone in New Jerusalem really understands. Yeah, just got to make sure it stays within the, the safe parameters. And you can build more than one. So, uh, I think we're pretty much done with this area now, right? Yeah, so before we leave, I did want to... Actually, actually, we can do that as we're leaving. I wanted to talk about some things. So, you know how they've lost people? Like, some of the, the robot people have died? Why don't they make backups? Like, I, I guess the, the mind transfer technology in these puzzles is something that's new to them, but... You would think that they would at least try to figure out how to make backups, so that way, you know, if somebody dies, they at least have a recent backup of their consciousness to put into a new robot body. It, it's just kind of weird how they've... made so many robots and not figured out how to do backups. And I'm already forgetting how to leave this place. <laughs> hmm. Oh right, I need to do the tower first. That is somewhere up here. I guess I need to go in this direction. There's also some stuff I noticed where I, I think I missed some things in some areas, so we might go back and do that. But I might do some editing for that, or just like, not record as I'm traveling. Alright, here we are. though. Okay, it doesn't like that. How about this? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Okay, I see. Ooh. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> oh, that's strange. Let's try that then. Okay, that's also not gonna work. Hmm. We're gonna hit this tree, right? Right? No, apparently not. Apparently this tree is just free real estate. Uh, okay. Let's do this then. Uh, 
like, yeah, that's that's not working. Also not working exactly. I think this is just a bad start. Come on now. Need to back up a little bit more. There we go. How about this? Is this a bit better? Maybe? No, because it doesn't connect. Alright, need to square first, maybe? How about this? There we go, finally. Alright, anything on this little middle island here? Doesn't really seem like it, and if I fall down, I'd have to walk all the way back around again. Well, let's just continue then. And I think that's the one we couldn't find any way to get up onto, right? Yeah. Because that would let you fall into the puzzle. Which would be cool, but I don't think there's a way to get up there. If there is, feel free to tell me. Oh, this is a little different. Just look at that. Wow. This is quite a vantage point. Imagine smuggling a connector up here. <laughs> Wait, is there one on each side? Or did I just make a full circle? Okay, apparently I just made a full circle and didn't realize it. Stratton of Stagira had little respect for the gods, and instead placed his faith in Prometheus. Driven by hubris, he asked questions that must not be asked, and revealed secrets that should have remained hidden. It is said that for these offenses, he was put to death by the people of his city. Can you see the folly of his actions? Our options are, it is never folly to pursue the truth, even if there's a cost. Folly was not his, it was the people who acted foolishly. There is no folly in pursuing the truth. It was only his methods that were mistaken. I can, it was foolish of him to give his own life in the pursuit of truth. I can, he should have respected the traditions and beliefs of his people. Ooh, what an interesting set of options. I like this one the most, currently. Yeah, let's go with this. Then what methods do you propose he should have used? He should have been more diplomatic. He should have recruited others in secret. He should have spoken allegorically. I suppose diplomatic is a closer word. Many came before Stratum whose methods were gentler. They achieved nothing. His folly was not born of ignorance, but it was folly nonetheless. Consider this as you approach the flame. You see this, and yet entire empires have been built on dreams, lies, and illusions.
Interesting. And where are those empires now? And they would have been better built on a foundation of truth. You're right, but we cannot keep lying to ourselves forever. Some dreams are truthful. What interesting options. Yeah, I mean, the empires built on lies also had a lot of terrible things going on in them, right? Let's, let's not romanticize the past here. Do you truly believe such a world could be built? Then you are more innocent than I expected. But innocence will not protect you from the flame. My belief in truth does not come from innocence, but from the hard lessons of human history. You have built something beautiful out of reason and memory. But it too will burn. As she did. Ooh, so either Miranda or Athena was injured by their creation. Okay then. That was surprisingly calm, given how aggressive Pandora has been elsewhere. I didn't think she'd even want to talk to you. I've toyed with the idea that the entities might be epiphenomenal in some way. Instead of causing the changes in the system, maybe they just respond to them. Yeah, I was thinking that they might be sort of AI constructs in a way, like Elohim, where they're just meant to be part of the test and they have limited control over the course of events. Alright. According to my notes, I miss- I think I missed a couple things in a couple places, so I'm going to stop recording here, start a new recording, and then just cut out whatever doesn't, uh, whatever's not interesting to watch. So I will be back in a bit. Why is this happening? Excuse me? Uh... Okay then. Wait, what? Why is this happening now? Hello? Well, I guess this is part of the recording now. <laughs> uh... Anyway. Let's see, I think... I think the thing I was missing was over here. Ah, yes, there it is. I see it already. Is it possible that on some level, people want to believe that everything's going to get worse? That it's comforting to think that humanity is bad and every solution will just go wrong? 
because that way you're never responsible. You never have to take on responsibility for anything outside yourself. Never have to grow up. Yeah, there are some people like that. And there was something else I wanted to look at in this lab here, I think. I think it was this lab. Uh, no? Maybe not this lab? Oh yes, it is this lab. Okay, so... Remember in a previous episode when I was commenting about how this was, like, an apt metaphor for the game? That we're playing right now? This was also here, and I didn't notice it or didn't comment on it. I, I remember seeing it, but I didn't think of it very much. You can think of this as Byron being taken out of the game. Right? Isn't that interesting? Well, I'm gonna stop the recording here again and go to the next place. I don't know what my character is deciding to shuffle around. Alright. I think there was one around here that I missed as well, I think. I don't remember hearing the audio for it. Ah, there it is. Yes. And I also wanted to see if we could fix transmission or not. Because, uh, last time we played it, the barriers were broken. Miranda, would you like to play a game? A game? That sounds like fun. It is. Remember what Alexandra Drennan said about games? They're part of what makes us human. Exactly. And this is a game Alexandra Drennan designed when she was still in school. It's based on her favorite book. Have a go. Mother-daughter activities, I suppose. Alright. Let's see if this helps at all. No. Well, somebody told me in on Steam forums that if you reset one of the other puzzles, it might fix these barriers. It's so like maybe they have the barriers associated with the wrong puzzles. But uh I'm not gonna bother with that right now. We'll come back to this once they patch it. Alright. Now, last time I fast traveled to a puzzle, this turned around in the opposite direction for some reason, but we're gonna head to a new area and maybe this will work properly. Oh, yep, looks like it's working properly. I remember when I was quite young, I was having trouble figuring out what I wanted to do. I wanted to see the outside world, but even back then, that wasn't really encouraged. I ran into Byron on Jameson Avenue, completely by accident, and I was too nervous to talk to him. I mean, he was one of the first companions. But he noticed me, and we started talking, and he was really encouraging. Introduced me to Garrus, and took me along on an expedition to the quarries and the mountains. Whatever flaws he may have, Byron cares about people. He changed my life. Yep. That's Byron in a nutshell. Yeah, Byron seems like a pretty good person, just maybe a tad too idealistic. Maybe only a tad, though. How are they gonna so, keep us- here it looks like there should be an anti-gravity elevator, but it's locked down. I'll need you to connect to the data stream again. I'm really sorry, 1K. I know it's a risk, but I think it'll be worth it. I wonder how they're gonna keep us from just wandering off out into the distance. Because it's up to now, it's all been water because there's been islands. Have you seen Miranda's design for a transport system that would connect all the labs to the machine? It's amazing, isn't it? I think she's really excited about showing this place to people one day. She also kept asking me about what kind of monuments we could build, you know? To really transform the landscape, show the possibilities. But her capsules only fit one person. It's just the first iteration. Give her some time. She'll figure it out. Remember how many mistakes we made in the beginning, even with all the blueprints we had? 
But that's not my point. It just worries me that she lacks context. Her imagination is incredible, but it's still limited by what she hasn't experienced. Would it have been better if she'd been raised in New Jerusalem? If her mind was limited by self-hate and decay? If all she could imagine was sitting around ignoring the universe in favor of self-righteous solipsism? No, but... I, I don't know. <sighs> Sorry. You're not wrong. We can't stay hidden forever. What is this? There are entirely too many strange things going on around here. Ah, it seems like something bad happened here. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first day of the month, at the end of the... That the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, because that Tyrus hath set against Jerusalem, aha, she is broken, that was the gates of the people. She is turned unto me, I shall be replenished, now she is laid waste. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus and will cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causes his waves to come up. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus, and break down her towers. I will also scrape her dust from her, and make her like the top of a rock. It shall be a place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God, and it shall become a spoil to the nations. And her daughters, which are in the field, shall be slain by the sword and they shall know that I am the Lord. That's quite scary. <laughs> faith. Perhaps faith is neither choice nor submission. Perhaps faith is a demand for our pain to have meaning, for the stories of the world to rhyme, for a world designed by a loving hand. Perhaps I will believe with defiance in the forgiveness of all sins, in the kingdom of God on earth, and even the resurrection of the dead. I will believe with clenched fists and gritted teeth and prayers that refuse to be gentle. Yeah, whatever bad thing happened here, it seems like somebody's trying to cope with it. Trial. Unauthorized trial at secondary site. Catastrophic failure. She's gone. Okay, so this... This is where somebody died. Yikes. Yeah, so something really bad did happen here. Somebody died here. It's over. We failed. Everything we thought we were doing. It's all ashes now. I don't think you really believe that. She's gone, Cornelius. She's gone because I failed her. She's gone because the machine that I built killed her. She was perfect. And now, she's nothing. I know you don't want to hear this. I know you want her to be perfect, to be blameless. But you didn't kill her, Athena. She killed herself. She killed herself because she was reckless, because she was naive, and frankly, because she was a little arrogant, too. She was reckless because I filled her head with dreams. Dreams of the future, of a better world. A world that nobody wants. No, no, it's not the dreams that killed her. It's that we brought her here. It's that we tried to build all this outside the city. We raised her without people, without society. 
The wilderness is for prophets, Athena, not for children. We should have stayed, fought for our ideas. It's too late now. It's too late. So Miranda, Miranda died in whatever catastrophe happened here, and Athena and Cornelius both took it really hard on themselves and maybe didn't come to the correct conclusions about what exactly went wrong with what they were doing. They lost their daughter. Right here in this ruin. Cornelius and Athena lost their daughter. Miranda's dead. So even the Founder doesn't have perfect control over this technology. Even the Founder makes mistakes. Byron was right in a way. We turned the Founder into something she never was. She was never perfect. She was never infallible. No one is. Listen... I understand why you and Byron see so much hope in this technology. You want us to be better. To grow. But what if it all goes wrong? If even the Founder couldn't get it right, what hope do we have? Uh, you could- I don't know if you know this, but we've literally seen body replication technology and mind swapping technology, I'm pretty sure we can just create some backups and nothing will be able to go wrong from that point that will have any catastrophic effects like losing someone entirely. Like, why didn't Athena just have a backup of Miranda on file? Like, that, that just would have averted everything. Like, you could even maybe even do continuous backups because of how quick the, the mind swap happens. It could just be continuously updating the backup server. And uh, if, if you die, you know, you just respawn. It doesn't have to be death like this. I don't know if you know that, Yakut. I don't know if maybe you've not thought through the implications, but good sir, let me tell you, there are many ways to avoid this. Many, many ways. And here's our actual options. <laughs> Nothing's forcing us to repeat the mistakes of the past. Mistakes will happen, but bad things happen no matter what we do. The risks of the megastructure concern me, that's what we need to know more. You're right, this technology could destroy us or the whole planet. But what if one mistake is enough? One mistake was enough to kill Miranda. And the energy readings from inside the megastructure are insane. What if we try to use it and blow a hole in the planet? Ooh, a lot of choices here. That's catastrophist thinking. People only ever have these phobias about new things, but all our established technologies have their dangers. If we only ever considered the worst case scenario, we'd do nothing and then still die. The universe is inherently dangerous. A major natural disaster is always coming our way. We need to have a little faith in our species. That's what precautions are for. We can do things carefully. The planet will be fine in the long run. You're right, this technology could be too much for us. There's a lot of interesting things here, and I agree with some of them. Like, this is true. This is also true. This is also true. Like, like, I, like I said in the previous episode, the sun is going to expand and destroy the Earth someday, and if we're not off the planet by then, well, that's toast to all the consciousness in this part of the solar system, I suppose. And yeah, this is basically what I was lecturing Yakut about just a moment ago. Don't you think the Founder took precautions? Human history is full of disasters. Do you think they're all down to carelessness? Not arrogance? Not hubris? Just a lack of precautions? Yeah, pretty much. I 
ideas that keep Richie's absolve us of responsibility. Some disasters are unavoidable, but we can learn from those too. You're right, precautions may not be enough. What's the alternative? Huh. I hadn't thought of it that way. So instead of saying, this should have been done better, we say, we reached too far and the universe punished us. So we never learn to be responsible, never learn how to do it right. And events like Miranda's death become meaningless. Anyway, thanks for talking to me. The truth is, lately, I sometimes feel kind of lost. The universe is vast and threatening. History is depressing and I need something to hold on to. Something other than fear. I have to figure out what that is. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Thanks for your help, Wonkai. The elevator should be working now. And Yakut, I'm sorry about Miranda. I know you're looking forward to meeting her. Yeah, if you take it as a sign of the universe punishing you, then you haven't really learned. The lesson should be you needed more precautions in place. Like I said, a, a continuous backup system would really help. Like, the disaster here would still happen, this would still be like a, a crater or whatever. But at least you would still have Miranda. It just kind of baffles me that they made the mind swap in your know, body duplication technology and somehow didn't think of continuous backups. But I guess it has to have been that way for the story. And, uh... It lets us have these interesting conversations where we question, you know, if some things really shouldn't be tried at all, or if they just need more precautions. There has to be a story for there to be a story, <laughs> I guess. You know what I mean. So, uh, really, what's- what's to stop us from just wandering out into the nothingness here? Ah, uh, low graphic settings. I'm trying to see if there is that look up easter egg like in Talos 1. Exiting designated safe stone. Okay, so that's how they stop us. <laughs> All right. That's that's certainly interesting. That's the first time we've seen that. Still, an absolutely massive area to explore, and this is as fast as we can travel. In this environment, it'll be easy to see things from a distance and know whether it's worth exploring in certain places, other than the graphical pop-in. Triangle plus transfer. 
I remember liking transfer from... was it Road to Gehenna? I think it was one of the Grey Sigils, right? I don't know if this is the same idea, though. Hmm... Isn't that interesting? Hmm. I'm guessing that's the exit over there. I mean, the the goal over there. Ah. Okay. start this, though. Okay, we can do this at least. Yep, that's our ultimate goal. Interesting. Just in case. Alright. That should be okay, right? Ooh. Right. Doesn't hit from that side, does it? I don't think there's one on the other side here. Well. Let's put that back and see what we can do about this situation. Ooh. Might we be able to take advantage of that? Maybe. Aha! Look at this! That works. Alright. Hmm. We still need it in here, is the thing. Maybe... Maybe I'm just overcomplicating things here. Let's try to attend this over there as well. Maybe that'll help us. Ah, uh, but then how do we get ourselves over there is the question. We already established that this doesn't take that with us. Yeah, this is the problem here.
wonder. This won't work without taking both of them back, will it? Well, that's okay, I guess. Alright, so with that back like that again... Let's see if we can mess with that from over here. We can. Interesting. Here's another question. This doesn't have an angle on this, right? Yeah, it does not. And this wall is tall so that we can't just put a connector up top there and have it seen through like this. Wait, or can we? Re really? Are you serious? Wait, what's this for then? Is that all I need to do? Hold on a moment here. this up in just the right way, it seems. No, and this wall is too high. Okay. Yeah, so this is not gonna work. Yeah, okay. What about here, though? See, this works. Is there a way where we can see both sides here? Kind of, maybe... I think this could see both. Let's test it. Yeah, if it was on the back wall, it would certainly be easier. Maybe this is the transfer it's talking about? Yeah, so this works here. Then what if we do this? Okay, so that does work. But then now what? How does that help us at all? I guess we're supposed to cross ourselves that way? No, how would that help, though? Uh, yeah, I'm a little unclear on how that helps us. Wait, that can't point to that, can it? Am I- am I massively overcomplicating things here? Could I have done this from the beginning? Oh, I'm so dumb! <laughs> I could have done that so long ago! Oh, wow, yeah, I overcomplicated this one. My bad. I hate 
solving puzzles myself, but watching you solve them is kind of fun. Why? Because I'm so bad at it sometimes and really massively overcomplicate it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I made that way more difficult than it needed to be. I could have done that in like a couple minutes. That's like it's Puzzle 3 right there. There's a question mark behind it though. Would you look at that? And it wants red. Interesting. And it's at an angle where the puzzle we just did is not going to work for it. Okay. Another question mark out here in this direction somewhere. see around us may not always be as it appears. Some philosophers have said that we are surrounded by nothingness, merely because air is not visible to the eye. And yet one needs only to observe the wind in the trees, or to plunge one's hand into the clear waters of the Aegean, to see that air has material substance. The same applies to many other forces that shape our lives. That they seem invisible does not mean that they are absent. It only means we have not yet learned how to observe them. And yet, lately I have struggled to understand what I am seeing. This strange, insubstantial island. These machine men. This woman with a fierce voice like an Amazon. Who are they? How did I get here? Is this another Elohim situation where even the Stratton recordings are like another AI that became sentient accidentally? Not sure what's going on with that exactly. She's remarkable, isn't she? She sees so much beauty in everything. She is, you're right. But I'm not sure she doesn't see too much beauty. Is it wrong to be delighted by the perfection of the universe? To look at what surrounds us and experience awe instead of just fear? No, but to call it uh, perfection implies a kind of moral value that it doesn't have. The universe is cold, Athena. It doesn't care about us or about life or civilization. It fundamentally cannot care. But Miranda seems to think it's almost uh, benevolent, purposeful. You're right. But have you considered that maybe she sees something we can't see? A step ahead? You know, Cornelius, if we succeed, the next generation will not be like us. They might see the world in ways we never could have imagined. Maybe she's the first sign of that. I hope so. I really do, Athena. You know that I love her, and I am perpetually amazed that this being we created that came solely from our minds is so profoundly different and unique. That does strike me as a kind of miracle. But it's also a huge responsibility. And I worry about our choices. Interesting. Alright, let's do another triangle puzzle. Convolution.
interesting. Oh. I was just curious. Hmm. Well, this can be bootstrapped at least. Well, no, because this will lose its connection, so we'll have to do this a couple times, I think. But it still is. Uh, right, this has to be outside. Yeah, now it'll work. There we go. So now, in order to bootstrap it, need that, and I didn't need to disconnect it actually. There we go. Now it is bootstrapped. Although the question is, do we want to bootstrap it inside or outside? I guess it doesn't really matter because that that wall is so thin. Yeah, I think that's the only thing. I think I think there's not a way to take that out here, so that has to stay inside. But now, is that it? Are we done? Oh yes, we're done. Excellent. I like this song. Is that a giant blue connector up there? I think that is. But why? And what could we hit it with? Uh... Isn't the tower normally where the leader is supposed to come from and not go to? Huh. Another flame. I guess this is the back side of a puzzle. Yeah, puzzle two, it seems like. I don't like sand. It's coarse, <laughs> rough, irritating, <laughs> and it gets in my ball bearings. <laughs> oh, they could not resist. They could not resist. Right, I think we will start reading this next episode. Thank you for watching.